just lost a, a water bag. I saw them blow out. <laughs> oh, I always thought they were so paranoid. They're not. It really is true. So it's back to work. I got back from the blocks actually a couple days ago and was dragging ass, dude, because that is an intense experience. You've got massive, massive, massive amounts of learning going on across multiple topics by multiple people, plus group conversations, plus you have a conversation with one of your fellow entrepreneurs and there's something you can help them with. So then you're teaching or they have something they can help you with. So now you're learning again. Then you eat, then the food was fantastic. The chef absolutely killed it. And then you don't go back to your hotel room. You go directly out and start doing social activities out on the town. We had some cool stuff at a bar. We had all sorts of badass stuff. If you didn't get a chance to see that vlog, you should go check it out because it's fucking fantastic. It was so much fun. Anyways, you get back on Sunday night. Monday was just like, oh my God. Tuesday, I was a lot more perky, but I ran out of gas. So I was like flying high. And then by like four, five, something like that, I really started to run out of gas mentally. Like I felt energetic, but I just mentally was like, Ugh. yesterday was badass back on top of it. But I have so much to do and I'm going to, I need to leave for a meeting or I'm going to be late, but I've got so much to do kind of to catch up. And then I've got pages of executable things that I want to do to the businesses post blocks. So it was like jiving. So yesterday was awesome. But then today I've got a ton of shit going on. However, I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get back after it and shoot vlogs, try and put out a video every single day so you guys can follow along in my life as we scale businesses, grow businesses, just have a good old entrepreneurial time. So anyways, I got to leave right now to go to a meeting. So let's go jump in the truck and let's head to this meeting. It's like a technology guy. I don't remember. I'll tell you in the truck. So I'm headed over to this meeting with this technology guy. Don't really remember what the hell he does because I think I linked up with him in September. He called the jump off to actually reserve a water slide. I happened to answer the phone kind of randomly. I don't remember why Cassie wasn't on the clock, but she wasn't. And so he rents this slide and then he's like hey is this the business owner i was like i am he said well and he starts explaining to me this technology thing i just take every meeting pretty much so if you're watching this and you're somebody that wants to reach out to me who my cpa is calling hold on hello yeah okay and then dollar wise okay now i'm late cpa calls in december you answer that phone call but i gotta rush so let's get into the meeting that was a good meeting i guess what i would say that he does is like tech technology strategist he does a lot of different things <clears throat> so what i'm gonna have him do is price me out services to revamp the jump off website revamp the let's get lit website revamp the shopify store revamp my personal blog nicklasset.com then to stay on board at the jump off and at the shopify store to review the analytics on the buttons that are clicked what's converting the best, what we should move over here, what we should move over there, basically so I can have a consultant that I can A-B test stuff with and he can read all that data. Not saying I can't, but when I've got as many assets as I do, it's very hard to track it all. And so I need support, I need help in this. Here we go, I'm gonna plug him. There's the name of his company and his name's Michael Chan. So if you need any of those things I just said, automation or all those web services I just said, go check him out because he was a very nice guy, very cool guy. Um, I'm hoping to get my proposal from him next week, but he's gonna do all sorts of mock-ups and stuff for web design, so it may take longer than a week. But I'm very excited about that. Now I've gotta go pick up the dogs from the groomer. So this shit is about to get a little crazy in this truck. Okay, so as we drive over to Petco here to pick up the doges, I'm gonna have a little pep talk with you. This might be a budgeting pep talk. It might be like how to start a business pep talk. We'll see where this goes. So it is my belief that the leaner that you are when you start, the more successful you'll eventually become, 
And if you actually subscribe to the thinking of the Lean Startup, a book by Re, uh, 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 what's his name? I can't remember his first name. His last name is R E I S Reese, but I can't remember his first name. It's called The Lean Startup. It's an amazing book. But the theory is that you start lean, as in not a lot of assets to go along with your business, and you launch quickly. And so you take the path of least resistance to just launch, because once you launch something that is uh, as he calls quick and dirty. Once you launch quick and dirty, you actually start getting feedback metrics from the clients that you, you land. You may land one client or you may only have seven downloads, but of those people, they will tell you through their usage or literally you could just interview them, what more? Fe- what, what's the next feature you need to build out or where you should take the business, what you should focus on as your growth vehicle. So that's called the lean startup. So I'm a big fan of do it all yourself, launch, just build it good enough and launch. And then once you've launched, you can then start making tweaks. So in that meeting with Michael, so he's a programmer. So he said in like the programmer world, I guess you could say, they have a framework that they call crawl, walk, run meaning in the beginning when you start your business, you need to crawl, then you know you, you execute on some stuff and you can walk and then run, right? I loved that analogy and I'm totally going to steal it from him. So I've been in the crawl standpoint before, then I kind of graduated to walk. Now, in most of my businesses, I'm not ready to run, I'm ready to sprint. Like I'm ready to sprint this marathon, like let's get after it. All the stuff that I know I need that I've built out in a rudimentary way that maybe you've interacted with on the Shopify store for sure. So if you go to the jumpoffstore.com and buy something, cool stuff will happen. You get email, like you get an email the day they drop it, that USPS drops it in your mailbox, you get an email from me, from the store, right? That says it was delivered and it's got some information in it. I can do a much better job of that However, I've started myself so many businesses that I've got to have help. I've got to have help. So I'm ready to sprint because I've crawled and I've launched and I've and I've gotten good feedback from stuff. Sorry, this is a windy road and this GoPro is just chilling up on my dash. I need to install like a freaking GoPro mount on my dash so I don't have to hold this thing when I talk. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm ready to sprint and because I've crawled and I've walked, but I'm ready to rock and roll. So I, but I need, I need support. I need help in that. I can't just sit in my office all day and work on email drip campaigns or lead nurturing. It just doesn't, I can't do it at scale because I've got so much going on. So, so I guess the pep talk for you is try to figure out what zone you're in right now. Are you crawling, walking, or ready to run? And then what different modes do you need to get yourself into and or who do you need to speak to to make those things reality, to execute upon the proper things to help you start running, then start sprinting, and then continue the marathon for the rest of your life. We're about to run a red light because ain't nobody around. Yeah, that's the stupidest left turn signal light ever. What's the point of having a red light right there when there's not, it's not a busy road, dude, and it's not one of those roads where like the angles are fucked up. It's like a regular ass road. It's very important you don't go hire a contractor to start doing something you don't know anything about. If you don't know anything about SEO, you probably should not go hire an SEO guy because SEO guy or gal can just start taking your money and you'll never know if they did a good job because you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what they're doing. Same with Google Ads. If you've never run a Google ad and you don't know how it works and you don't know the key metrics that you wanna hit and you don't know what your cost per click is or should be, you shouldn't go hire somebody to do Google Ads. You need to do your own damn Google Ads at least for a short period of time so you can get a little bit dangerous in it so that way when you go hire somebody you can check up on their work and make sure they're doing it correctly. Okay, I think rant is over. Let's go get the dogs. Evie. All right, here we go. Oh, they're laying down. They're being good. Oh, there we go. There are the doggies. Doggies in the truck. 
All right, now we're going back to the office. Made the decision, they're coming with me to the office. It's gonna be a little bit of a wild ride, but it's all freaking good. I've got a 2.30 interview with a stranger. Some guy that was messaging me on Instagram asked if I could take a quick call. So I don't say yes very often, but every now and then I do, especially if the person is poignant, if they're, if they're <clears throat> you know, if their questions are direct and obvious that they've done some research, not, not some willy-nilly thing, I, uh, I, I potentially will take the interview then, and they're going to ask me a bunch of questions. However, there is a selfish component to it, because I'm obviously going to film it, and it's probably going to go, hopefully, if I pull this off right, you're about to watch it. Hopefully, you're about to watch it, and it's going to live inside this vlog. Okay, tell everybody who you are. I'm Christian. I'm starting a inflatable business company. Uh, I'm just talking to Nick for some input and some great invite, advice that he needs. I do want to talk about the three owner thing that you were talking about. Yeah, I can make this analogy two different ways, but back in the day, like I grew up a skateboarder, right? And so what do you do when you're a skateboarder? You and your buddies go skate past a new development being built and you see a bunch of wood and you're like, dude, we're totally going to build a half pipe. And so what ends up happening is one guy uses all the tools, brings the nails, you know, exactly. All that's yeah, that's that going guy's got to supply everything because everybody else is like kind of along for the ride. And there's one leader when there's disagreements that happens, everybody thinks they're equals, but really that one guy that's like kind of doing all the stuff is the one that starts to get frustrated. And then you end up building like the deck and then that's the end of your half pipe forever. Right. Basically, if you're, if you're going to start something, it's better to start it alone because that's the best way to go about conducting business. Yeah. Now, it doesn't have the fun social aspects to it of like me and my buddies, we're going to start this inflatable company and it's going to be great. And we're going to scale super huge and take everybody out or whatever, you know, whatever your yeah. motivations are in a social setting. Everybody's on the same page <clears throat> but behind closed doors. You don't get to watch Netflix anymore. Like you don't get to go out with your girl on Friday night anymore to a party on Friday night anymore, because you've got to be up at 5 a.m. on Saturday to go do the drop offs. Like there's a massive amount of stuff you have to give up in yeah. order to become a successful entrepreneur. Now, once you are successful, I don't have to worry about that shit anymore because I've got employees. I got nine employees exactly, at work. Yeah. For, I'm in a position now where like I'm working on kind of making myself a CEO and president. I've worked my face off to get those freedoms back, but it's a harder position to be in because I got to make sure that my guys are happy, motivated, well taken care of, right? A long list of things that go on with, with successful team building. So they don't quit because if they quit, guess who the delivery driver is again? Generally speaking, to have those ambitions, like you're a fucking crazy person. What lunatic wants to never stop working? What lunatic wants to have this go off 24 hours a day? And if you don't answer it, you don't make money. Like nobody wants that. People yeah. want 401ks and pensions and they want to get off at four on Fridays and they want to go mm -hmm. kayaking and hunting. Like as an entrepreneur, you don't get to do any of that. Like you just play business. Like that's what you do is you play business. But, but the notion that there's three people that know each other that have those ambitions is extraordinarily rare. Of all of the people that I can think of off the top of my head that I know where I live at right now, I don't really know one. Like I know successful entrepreneurs that have the bug, but they don't want to start another business. If I if I went to them with a business proposal, they'd be like, I got one. It's fine. I'm fine. Right? And then in my whole scope of my whole life, like going back to like childhood, high school, like I can't even off the top of my head think of one that like is crazy like me. Take a quick break here to mention today's video sponsor. Jobber, that's right, Jobber. We use Jobber in my Christmas slide installation business, Let's Get Lit. It absolutely changed and saved my life. All of the employees get all the information for every single job in there. I'm able to outsource it to my office manager, Cassie. She runs the entire thing. I don't even have to touch it because it's so intuitive, it's so easy, it's so awesome. So if you wanna get a free trial for 14 days and then 20% off for six months, there's a link down in the description Go check out Jobber. It's hands down the best platform for services, period. Cool. Let's get back to the video. You're talking dirty to me. Like, I love this entrepreneurial. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And there's a hell of a lot more. I also mentioned something about the Christmas and Halloween inflatables. I want like 500 units of each and, you know, rent those out for the whole month. And you're talking about like decorations, Christmas decorations. 
the deck yeah like the inflatable decorations to me that one's got legs what i would do is i would start lean and i would start dirty and i would go try and buy some fucking used ones right now because you can go get 10 right now for the price of one or two the quickest easiest way to launch a website get them on the website and have be able to book them best bet's probably going to be inflatable office it is 39 dollars a month if you have less than 10 items build your website for you it's great if you guys at home are interested in inflatable office there's a link in the description go check them out if you launch it wrong because you're launching quick and you're launching dirty if it works you gotta do a lot of shit to correct it whereas if you just launch on inflatable office it's inflatable rental software. You'll I, you should be future proof. You'll obviously have to start paying past ten units. Nobody knows about this service, so you got to launch that website, get it up and running, make sure it's functional and pretty. You're gonna run Facebook ads to that website, and then that's gonna convert for you. Check it out, guys. I can give you a new angle because there's no sun out. I've been at the office so long today. It's freaking dark outside. Today was a pretty badass day, dude. So a lot of connections that I made with a lot of new people, and that's one of the most powerful parts that you can have of life. Oh my God, the puppy's like wrestling me. Evie, no, just sit. That's one of the most, stop it. That's one of the most powerful parts of life is the connections that you make with people. So as you travel through your life, you may be busy, but you can always say yes for the connection that's gonna be made. It doesn't always have to be transactional. It doesn't always have to be, it doesn't always have to be monetary. So that's the lesson for today's vlog amongst a lot of other lessons, I feel like. But uh, anyway, that's how I want to sign this blog off. So, vlog over.